O.J. Simpson was an obsessive womanizer who boasted of having seduced Kris Jenner, the wife of his closest buddy Robert Kardashian, in a jacuzzi, and they weren't the only ones. Simpson boasted to Norman Pardo, an O.J. confidant who managed the juices business and other matters for roughly 20 years, about his claimed hot tub hookup with Chris during the swinging 1990s. Pardo even went so far as to say that Simpson took great pride in the fact that his large manhood required the mother of Kim, Chloe, Courtney, and Robert to be brought to a hospital in the early hours of the morning, ostensibly to have her privates examined. O.J. publicly denied ever having a love or sexual involvement with Chris, calling the claims bogus despite his alleged sexual bravado about her. Additionally, Chris, who was then married to Bruce Jenner after divorcing Kardashian, vehemently denied ever having an affair with O.J. or being involved in the scandalous hot tub story. This is completely untrue and untrue, she declared. I have never had an affair with O.J. Simpson. Simpson, who passed away on Wednesday at the age of 76 from prostate cancer, was famously cleared of any involvement in the June 1994 fatal stabbings of Nicole Brown Simpson, his stunning blonde, a strange second wife who was also the mother of his two children, and her friend Ron Goldman. O.J.'s close friend Kardashian was one of the lawyers on the legal, dream team, who persuaded a jury consisting of one white person and eleven persons of color to find the defendant not guilty in what was dubbed the trial of the century, in 1995, which was shown on television to millions of viewers. After just three hours, the jury reached this decision which caused racial division throughout the nation. Kardashian, who thought O.J. was guilty and was stunned by his acquittal, passed away from cancer in 2003. The alleged hot tub get-together reportedly featured O.J., Chris, Nicole, and Robert Kardashian, according to Pardo. However, after Nicole, a close friend of Chris's, and Kardashian left, O.J. is said to have got up, undressed, and noticed that Chris's eyes were bugging out of her head. OJ boasted. I F asterisk asterisk kid that be until I broke her. To Pardo. When the New York Post broke the news of the hot tub and got a snippet from Pardo's movie, they cited the manager as, that was as twisted up as you can possibly get. Everything had been going well for the Kardashian and Simpson couples, OJ said to Pardo, until, the, little fling that they had, referring to the alleged one-night stand between Chris and Simpson in the jacuzzi. It seemed to him that the hot tub scene played a part in both couples' eventual divorce. I spoke with hundreds of people for my 2017 book, The Kardashians, an American drama, including the brother of Robert Kardashian, other Kardashian relatives, and close friends and associates of Robert and Chris from their early years onward. Not a single one of them brought up the hot tub scenario, or appeared to be aware of it. However, there was a strong buddy-like relationship between Chris and Simpson. She was well aware of Simpson's compulsive womanizing and the psychological and physical trauma Nicole endured during their tumultuous marriage. At times, O.J. sought to connect with young women he wanted to date by using Chris as a go-between. O.J. would have Chris call the number of a girl and, if a parent answered, pose as the girl's girlfriend and ask, for example, to Speak with Jennifer. O.J. would answer the phone when Jennifer got on the line, and Chris would place the call. I did think it was strange that O.J. was always calling these girls, Chris later remarked. It turned out that O.J. had asked her to make the call because the white girl was very young and O.J. didn't want her parents, who might answer the call, to hear his older, masculine, black voice. I mean, didn't he have a marriage? According to people I spoke with who were close to both Chris and O.J., Chris herself gambled with her marriage to Kardashian. Multi-millionaire businessman Larry Cranes, a close friend of Robert Kardashian from their high school days, told me that Kardashian was extremely domineering of Chris from the outset of their marriage. In order to make the former flight attendant and high school graduate wiser and more effective as a wife, he would give herself help cassette cassettes. But Chris became jaded by his control and reckless by her extramarital affairs. Cranes claimed that Chris had a boyfriend at one point, and that on one particular occasion, while they thought no one was home, 
Cranes and his housekeeper found the two of them on the lower level of his Beverly Hills residence. I need to go out, Chris would say to Robert. I need to have fun, said Joni Migdal, another close friend of Robert's. And she would go out and stay out really late. I need my freedom, Chris would tell Robert after going out drinking with the powerful Hollywood executive's wife, who had a partner. Chris would return home intoxicated between two and three in the morning. I have four children, yet I have not experienced life. Migdal, a well known real estate agent in Los Angeles, went on. She cheated on him because she felt he cheated her out of life, that she married him when she was young and never got the chance to go out and be herself. Chris continued to be a good mother to her children. You can enjoy yourself and still be a good mother. You have a nanny. You get the kids in bed, and you go. You simply complete it late at night. Kardashian's affair with 23-year-old Todd Waterman, 11 years her junior, and a professional soccer player, whom she mistakenly believed resembled actor Rob Lowe, was the tipping point for the actress. He kissed her after following her upstairs after they first met at a party. What the F asterisk asterisk K? She thought, and gave him a kiss in return. Chris subsequently admitted that they were having sex everywhere. However, Waterman's mother stopped it. Ilza Waterman, the mother of Waterman, answered the phone in the middle of the night when a very upset Kardashian called to ask about Chris. Mrs. Waterman informed him that it was 2.30 in the morning, your wife was 36, and her son was 24. I'll speak with my son, and I advise you to speak with your wife. After their mother-son conversation, Todd made the decision to move to London in order to get Chris out of his system and avoid her husband's fury. In 1990, over the summer, Robert filed for divorce. As his attorney informed me, Robert was devastated emotionally. He did not feel delighted about the divorce. He was a devoted family man who only cared about his spouse and kids. The future Caitlyn Jenner, Bruce Jenner, was Chris' next opponent. In 2015, Jenner came out as a transgender woman, and they got divorced.